In a uh, Reddit Ask Us Anything thread, Apex Legends game director Chad Grinier, 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 I'm going to go with the latter, uh, stood firm with the stance that the company refuses to employ crunch practices on the team and that the slower proliferation of content allows for employees to avoid 15 hour workdays. So this kind of came in the face of uh, their fan base saying, you're not releasing content fast enough, maybe we're losing interest in it because we need new stuff every week, which I think is a bit obviously unsustainable. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't think you necessarily need new content that quick in a game. That's a pretty short attention span. Yeah. And um, this kind of just comes on the back of um, of what, you would, what we had mentioned in previous weeks, where uh, crunching is a poor solution to poorly planned production schedules. Um, and even bringing on new people like at the end of a production schedule is less than optimal because people have to be trained in order to like get to know how systems work and whatnot. Um, so people would have to, those hires would have to be brought on at the beginning of production versus at the last method. So I think it's pretty damn commendable that it, that, um, not apex, uh, respawn has come mm-hmm. out and said like, no, we are not going to crunch our employees. They're going to work regular days and they produce nothing but quality for apex. And they also created my, one of my favorite games of all time, Titanfall two. So I'll give them a pass on and I mean, it uh, literally also everything. Yeah. It also helps that they're making so much money off Apex to where they can hire brand new people. And be like, oh, we can hire more 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 people so that we have more people working so that there's less crunch or just we don't have to crunch in general. So I mean it definitely helps that they're making money off of it. And I definitely think that this might keep Apex going for longer than people think it's going to, because it, I feel like when you like throw so much content at something so fast and Again, I don't want to give credit to Ubisoft, but I feel like Rainbow Six Siege does this really well in how they space out adding operators where they're not constant. Like, they're not, like, all the time. They're like, oh, every couple of months we're going to add, like, two or more operators in and add more a, a new a new map so people can have time to learn how these characters play. And I feel like Apex is doing the same thing. And I'm not a Battle Royale person, but I can appreciate any company that says, like, we're not going to crunch people. We don't want to do that. And well, people yeah, also forget that they're also not just working on Apex apex they're also doing like that vr medal of honor is it a medal of honor i just it's, barely I remember they yeah. also made uh fallen order i, I totally yep. forgot that yeah they also so it's not just the apex which then i'm guessing their anti-crunch model also goes to, to like their other product projects that are a apex I think it's also worth noting that Apex is a free game and like, yeah, you can buy the new characters, you can buy skins, but you can earn all that stuff in game without ever paying a single cent if you just played enough. And so I think for people to be, to constantly be, be demanding new content, I'm just like, yeah, I know you want new stuff, but you're getting a hell of an experience for free. So kind of weigh your priorities on that. And I think it's it's a little sad we're at a point that we're celebrating any studio that declares, oh, we're not going to crunch. But on the other hand, that's really how bad the game industry has gotten. It's as routine mm-hmm. as it is epidemic. And the, the other side of the thing, and we can talk about this a little with Avengers, which I know which we're also going to talk about. The... I get, I'm not, I'm not remotely excusing it, but I get the incentive to crunch on live service games because there are so many of them now. And they're all demanding everybody's attention that it's almost like everyone feels the need to put out content as much as possible, as fast as possible. A couple of live service games have admitted that. So it's almost this race and it makes it, it feels sometimes a crunch is not an inevitability, but then it's going to happen on live service games where you're determined to keep people's attention as long as possible. Right. I think you brought up a good point. Um, good point there also. It's that, it feels weird when there's a development studio that comes out and says like, hey, we're going to do the baseline thing that should just be like widespread versus, um, you know, people crunching. So we should it, it should be by default. People should work in normal shifts. It shouldn't right. necessarily mm-hmm. be something to celebrate. But when the whole industry is skewed one way, you kind of have to champion yeah. what should be normal. And I'm one industry leader. I'm not even going to mention him. Um, and, and you see this a lot from gamers in general, when complaints about crunch are brought up, they just say, oh, we'll just go get another job. Aside from that, it never being that easy, especially during a pandemic and especially in an industry as competitive as the, as the video game industry. 
my problem with that is it kind of implies that crunch at some studios is okay as long as there are alternatives. And if that's how low your bar is, that's a little worrying. Yeah. And the pro- and I think, pro- I mean, at least personally with me, my biggest issue, my biggest, biggest problem with Crunch, besides, you know, obviously the the labor, <laughs> is, um, is the fact that what they're doing is that they're taking advantage of people's love of, yeah. you know, what they're doing, of what they're working. They're, they're, they're basically mining their love for a little extra profit. And then, you know, you left there a shallow husk who's barely slept, who, you know, missed their child's birthday. And, you know, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to go make, I'm just going to go make a mobile app. And, you know, it's fuck video games and you leave and it's, that's, that's depressing. You'd be yeah. surprised by how many people, um, at least in the Bay Area where we live, um, mm. because there's also plenty of uh, studios here. A lot of people just wind up going to Apple saying like, yeah, I can do less work, work normal hours and make more money at Apple versus mm. working on like admittedly it's something they love which is games which is like why would you put yourself under that much duress i mean th- this is kind of a tech industry issue in general and i know this personally because it is the field i work in where there's a reason why there, there's this controversy about how silicon valley especially is so youth centric w- because it's very easy to convince people in their 20s that working 100 hour weeks is some sort of act of nobility and I'm sure, mm-hmm. and you, I'm sure you see that plenty in the game industry. It's easy to get them into, and I say them with me, Mason, and Sarah. I'm not sure how old you are. I'm go- thirty-two. Ah, oh, damn! I was gonna guess. <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, people in your twenties typically uh, unmarried. Uh, some are mm-hmm. in relationships, but typically don't have kids. So, like, yeah, you can drive those people into the ground. Versus, you know, someone who's in their forties who has a mortgage, mortgage, and whatnot. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's a it's a whole big mess. 